Hey guys, what's going on? Megan here. The 20 most popular testosterone boosting supplements ranked using science. You guys love to get scammed. You love to buy BS. You love to buy things that are only backed up by anecdotes and no real evidence behind them. So this tier list is based on the top 20 most popular, most commonly bought supplements for boosting testosterone. But the twist is we're going to rank them by how strong the scientific evidence is behind them, right? Because everybody has anecdotes. I could come up with a supplement out of my ass tomorrow and tell you, oh, look, before and after it works. But when you put it under the microscope, when you put them under randomized controlled trials, when you look at the meta-analysis, when you look at the systemic reviews, when you look at the vitro studies, vivo studies, animal studies, when you combine all of the evidence, right? Because you can't just look at one or two studies, right? When you combine all of the evidence, including the highest quality studies, right? The OCTs, which ones come out on top? That's where I want you guys to focus your attention. You spend thousands and thousands of dollars each year on things that just don't work, right? And obviously my job is to simplify things and to show you using the Pareto principle, what works? Where can you get the biggest bang for your buck? As you guys know, I hate scammers and I hate misinformation. That is why I read so much. That is why I read tens of thousands of studies. That is why I experiment so much. That is why I accumulate so much experience. I hate misinformation and I hate scammers. All right, let's start at random. d aspartic acid, DAA. There is currently weak human evidence that it increases testosterone. So I'm going to put that in BT. So save your money until stronger evidence emerges. Next, we have ginseng. There's also weak human evidence, so we're going to put that in B tier. Next, we have Fedogia agrestis, popularized by Andrew Huberman. But for the love of God, you guys have to stop listening to people who love to aggressively push things that do not have strong evidence behind them. I have nothing against Andrew Huberman. I'm pretty sure he's a great guy. But man, he spews a lot of BS sometimes. Fedogia agrestis only has animal evidence behind it. We do not have randomized control trials or even clinical human trials on fiduciary aggressors not to mention that we don't even know the full extent of the side effects the appropriate dose especially with the risk of toxicity and things like that so fiduciary aggressors is going to go in c tier right because we do have animal evidence but as you guys know you cannot always extrapolate animal data to human data right most of the time they're linked but Best to be patient and wait for several, not just one or two, but several human trials so that we can eventually do meta-analysis of those human trials and see if it's worth wasting your money on it. Next, we have honey goat weed. Same thing. We only have solid animal data on it. We do not have strong human evidence of honey goat weed. And the few that we do have don't even store strong effects. So honey goat weed, you guys are wasting your money. That's going in C tier. Next, we have betaine. Betaine is actually extremely underrated. And keep in mind, betaine should be obtained from foods. But we do have some solid human data showing that betaine increases testosterone. Watch my videos on betaine. Watch my, uh, read my articles and my Instagram posts on it. Betaine actually has very strong testosterone boosting effects in vitro, in animals, and in humans. But like I always say, you should get your nutrients from food and not supplements for many reasons that I'm not going to go into right now. So I'm going to put this in A tier. We have moderate, moderately strong human evidence. I'm not going to put it in S tier simply because, again, one or two randomized control trials is not enough, right? I need five, six, seven. The more, the better. And again, for those looking for food sources of betaine, quinoa, beets, spinach, and wheat bran, great sources of betaine. And also, if you eat enough choline from eggs and beef liver, your body's gonna convert that choline into betaine anyway, right? So don't go out there and start buying betaine supplements. Next, creatine. Even though creatine is one of the most researched supplements and it works, it's also found in animal products, mainly red meat. Creatine is not a testosterone booster. Now, there is some evidence that it can increase DHT, but I'm going to go in detail when I make my DHT tier list and my DHT boosting guide. But even then, that evidence is weak. It's only one study and it has not been replicated. Now, as far as total or free testosterone goes, we do not have strong human or even animal data, strong that is, showing that creatine increases testosterone. It might increase it through indirect mechanisms, which I could go on and on and show you the indirect ways in which creatine can increase testosterone, but it doesn't have a direct effect on testosterone production, especially if you're healthy. So I'm gonna put it in weak human evidence, right? B tier, mainly mainly because of that DHT study and a bunch of other studies that show its, its indirect effects on some aspects of that androgen status. But I would not be using creatine as a testosterone booster. I would use it instead for the physical gains and also 
the underrated next we have tribulus that's one of the oldest testosterone boosters out there now th this one is tricky because the research is very mixed right we have some data showing increases in testosterone some showing no increases at all but i gotta be objective here this one goes in beats here right we have some weak human evidence including animal evidence on the effects of tribulus right but they're not strong especially if you're really healthy all right next we have your testosterone boosters right the ones that are marketed by companies oh t boost testa alpha blah 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 bullshit right a lot of them are garbage a lot of them are trash a lot of them are underdose a lot of them have toxic chemicals inside toxic metals a lot of them are contaminated a lot of them don't even have what they claim is supposed to be on the label so whenever somebody sells you a testosterone booster most of the time look away right and the ones that do work are literally taking things that you should be getting from foods anyway like zinc and magnesium and boron and they're just slapping it in the bottle and charging you 50 dollars for it when you could literally spend that same 50 dollars on oysters salmon eggs red meat and get a lot more bang for your buck so i'm gonna put them in f tier there's zero evidence that those marketed testosterone boosters significantly increase testosterone levels in men long term and the few studies that even show that a specific plan of a testosterone booster works is usually funded by the company itself, which is always a red flag. That doesn't mean it's useless. It's just a red flag. And two, like I said, they're only they're just using like zinc and then mixing it with a bunch of BS and say, oh, look, your testosterone went up. Yes, yeah, because of the zinc. It's because of the boron. It's not because of the secret blend that they have. So F tier. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're saying, but what, well, Megan? Well, what if they mix the things that are in A and S tier into the supplement? But well, again, you don't even know that it's in there because companies lie all the freaking time. Even if the company owner is honest, he does not control the manufacturing process. He does not oversee the transport of the materials, whether it's from China or from some whatever country. No supplement owner can guarantee with a gun to his head that a random batch of his supplement has exactly what it says is in it so it's not worth the risk guys oh shit i put the wrong one it was this one all right and that brings us to the next one which is turkisterone as you guys know i made a lot of videos on egdisterone and turkisterone i was actually one of the first guys to talk about it over 10 years ago when no one even knew what it was before all these scamming snake oil salesmen started hopping on the train two three years ago so i'll be the first to tell you that egdisterone works i've been recommended for over a decade in a source of foods mainly quinoa and spinach it has a lot of powerful effects that are well researched. By the way, don't let anybody tell you that this one does not work. They're, they're clowns. I can make a whole video insulting and destroying all these idiots. Like this one works. There's so much, so much data behind like this one. My issue is the supplements, right? The people who claim that there's that you should get like this one from supplements. Most of these guys are snake oil salesmen, right? I've always, since day one, recommended that you got you like this one from food. For many reasons. Again, watch my videos on Egdisterone. Don't fall for the hype. Don't fall for the BS. Anyone who's promoting Egdisterone or Turkisterone supplement and overhyping it is full of shit. Now, as far as the testosterone boosting effects of Egdisterone, no. There's no strong animal or human data showing that Egdisterone and Turkisterone increase testosterone directly. Are there some indirect effects? Of course. Almost everything has an indirect effect on testosterone, but there's no direct effect at least not based on the years of research that egdisterone or turkisterone directly increase testosterone. So I'm going to put that in FT. I'm not going to use egdisterone and turkisterone, especially a supplement, to increase my testosterone. Now, if you were getting it from foods, then that's a whole different story because you're also getting the other compounds that can promote net androgen status. Next, we have fenugreek. That is actually one of the most researched testosterone boosting compounds out there. It does increase testosterone in most animal studies, vitro studies, and even human studies. It does increase testosterone. The only downside is the mechanisms are still not clear. Every study reports different findings. And a lot of studies actually show that it can potentially decrease DHT. And you guys know over here, we do not play with DHT at Team 3D Alpha. It is your most powerful androgen. I have a whole video. Uh, watch my guide to hormones tier list where I explain where you do not want to block DHT out. I also have an article on there. Check it out. I'm going to make a dedicated video to DHT when I get the time because there's so much misinformation on DHT, which I'm not surprised, right? We live in a society where everyone is trying to cancel masculinity. So it's not surprising that the most masculine hormone in the entire human body, more androgenic than testosterone, is under attack. But long story short, I do not recommend anything that can decrease your DHT in expense or higher testosterone levels. But I got to stay objective. This is based on scientific evidence. And fenugreek does have a lot of data 
um, backing it up. So I'm going to put in A tier. We have moderate human evidence that fenugreek is a good testosterone booster. But again, it's moderate, right? It's not really strong. And like I said, it has side effects. Next, we have shilajit, right? There's a lot of hype around it. Does it increase testosterone? Does it not? Is it a scam? Well, we do have some data that shilajit increases testosterone, but it's mostly animal studies we do have human studies on shilajit but again the findings are not strong and they're not conclusive and even in the human studies that do report an increase in testosterone it's pretty modest it's not a huge increase such as the ones that i'm going to put in st right so shilajit i would say hold off on it if you want to take it for other reasons that's fine but if you want to take it to maximize testosterone i will hold off until we have more human data so i'm going to put shilajit in b tier currently we have weak human evidence we need more studies especially more randomized control trials next we have coffee right caffeine coffee that is actually one of the most underrated testosterone boosters out there by far coffee has a lot of anti-inflammatory properties a lot of antioxidants it has a little bit of boron it increases dopamine which obviously lowers prolactin and increases lh and testosterone production it is extremely well researched we have human data animal data and it is a shame that it's so underrated so coffee slash caffeine goes in a tier at the very beginning movement of a tier the only reason why it's not higher is because we don't have enough human studies we have a lot of human studies on caffeine slash coffee and testosterone um, but we don't have enough right i need a lot guys i need five six seven eight nine ten right two three four five randomized control trials that's not enough to convince me next maca root is that a strong testosterone booster we do have a lot of studies on it and most of them do not show a strong effect on testosterone boosting in humans so as of right now we have weak human evidence so it's going to go in b tier Next, we have boron. You guys know it's one of my favorite minerals. I have a lot of videos on boron. Check them out. We do have studies showing boron's powerful effects on testosterone, especially free testosterone. It also has a lot of effects on inflammation, vitamin and mineral status, bone metabolism. I mean, there's so many effects. It lowers estradiol, which is the strongest estrogen. It increases DHT. Boron is one of the most slept on, most underrated minerals out there. The only downside is we, we only have a couple of human studies on boron and testosterone. We need more, right? So it goes in A tier, right? We do have human evidence, but it is moderate. Next, magnesium. Magnesium is one of the most important minerals in the body. I have a lot of videos on magnesium. And yes, we do have human data showing magnesium increasing testosterone, especially free testosterone levels. And it does so through many pathways. You can check out my videos and articles on it. It's going to go in A tier. Mainly because we don't have a lot of direct studies focusing on magnesium and total testosterone and free testosterone only, right? It's usually studies that are looking at many different things, right? I need them to hone in on magnesium and testosterone alone. But we do have some human studies showing that it has a positive effect, which is not surprising because magnesium affects almost everything in the body. We also don't have a lot of meta-analysis on the topic because, like I said, there's not a lot of RCTs directly linking the two. All right, next, ZMA. ZMA, which is zinc, magnesium, and makes what I think vitamin B6. I got to double check. But ZMA has been along for a long time. It's, it was actually one of the most popular testosterone boosters years ago. But the research came back showing that most ZMA supplements do not significantly boost testosterone in humans. So it's going to be in B tier. Only, and the only reason why I see it in B tier is because it has zinc and magnesium, which are very powerful. But the issue is... The moment you put it into a supplement and you mix it with a bunch of stuff, now you got to deal with the integrity of the manufacturer, the integrity of the supplement company. So it kind of muddies the water. So that's why it's in B tier, right? Which, again, that's my main complaint against supplements. You never know what you're getting. That's why I always prefer to get things from foods, even though there's issues with soil quality or whatever. At least you know that there's a higher chance that you're getting that nutrient from whole foods. Next, we have vitamin D3. Vitamin D3 actually has strong human evidence that it increases testosterone watch my video on sunlight i made a whole video years ago on sunlight and all the effects that it has on the body but i also mentioned vitamin d3 which is actually a hormone i always have to remind people that vitamin d is not a vitamin it is a hormone it was called a vitamin by accident but again watch the video that i have on it while i go into the details as far as its effects on testosterone there are op mainly because there are vitamin d receptors in almost every cell of the body including your testes we evolved to get plenty of sunlight so it is not surprising so vitamin d3 goes in a tier we have moderate human evidence the reason why it's not higher is because if your vitamin d levels are 
very low and you increase them, you are going to get an increase in testosterone, but it's not going to be substantial, right? It's just going to put you in that normal range. If you go from, let's say, 20 nanogram per milliliter to, let's say, 70 nanogram per milliliter, your testosterone is not going to go from, let's say, 150 nanogram per deciliter to 1,000, right? It's not going to work that way, right? So so that's one of the reasons why I'm putting it in A tier and not higher. It's mandatory for testosterone, but it's not going to put you significantly in the upper range unless you're doing everything right. Next, ashwagandha, one of the most popular testosterone boosters out there. In fact, it's taken not for testosterone. A lot of people take it for the cortisol reducing effects. The effects that it has on inflammation and a bunch of other things but as a testosterone booster we only have moderate human data right and a lot of the increases in testosterone from ashwagandha mainly come from lowering cortisol reducing inflammation meaning if you're healthy and you don't have high cortisol levels and you eat a nutrient-rich diet you're not going to see a huge increase in testosterone from ashwagandha but again to be fair we do have moderate human evidence that it does increase testosterone but to be fair, we do have some human data showing that it increases testosterone. My only issue is, once again, they're not controlling for many factors, right? Is the testosterone going up because of the inflammation going down? Is it because of the cortisol reduction? We don't really know. So we need more human studies. I'm going to put in B tier. We have weak human evidence that ashwagandha increases testosterone, right? Even And even when it does, it's only by about 15 to 20%, which is significant, but... Again, not significant enough for you to waste your money on it, especially when we don't have a lot of clear mechanisms established. There's a lot of mechanisms out there that are listed for why ashwagandha works, but a lot of them are still in the hypothesis slash theory phase. Next, we have Tonkat Ali. Now, I got to be objective here. As much as I like to bash supplements, this is the one that has a lot, a lot of research on it, both on animals, in vitro, in humans, and almost every study shows a positive effect on total or even free, mostly free testosterone levels. And the surprising finding is that even in healthy males, Tonkat Ali still increases testosterone levels, right? And that's actually shocking because most studies done on testosterone boosters use men that have issues. They either obese or they're sedentary or whatever. Tonkat Ali works even in men who are healthy. The only issue is, once again, is the sourcing problem, right? You cannot rely on most of the Tonkat Ali that you get from supplement companies because, again, they either underdose it or it's mixed with toxic chemicals, or some of them don't even have Tonkat Ali in it. Not to mention, you also got to get the right kind of Tonkat Ali. Where did they get it from? I mean, it's it's a headache, right? So that's the only reason I'm not going to put it higher than A tier, right? We have moderate human evidence that Tonkat Ali works, but there's too many issues associated with it, mainly sourcing issues. Next, we have zinc. If you watch my videos, you should be familiar with zinc. It is one of the most powerful minerals in the human body, one of the most important minerals for testosterone production and we have vivo studies vitro studies animal studies and a crap ton of human studies all converging on the same finding that zinc dramatically increases testosterone levels especially if you're deficient and if you're getting enough zinc obviously this it's not going to play a big role but the problem is even the rda amount is not enough for most people right because we eat a lot of phytic acid which increases our zinc requirements so zinc goes at the very top in S tier. But as always, get your zinc from oysters and red meat. Do not get it from supplements because you're going to run into sourcing issues, overdosing issues, and copper deficiency issues. Whereas if you get them from whole foods, you don't have to worry about any of that stuff. Last but not least, we have a balanced, nutrient-rich diet, such as what's listed in my videos, in my tier list, and in my testosterone ebook. That's going to go in S tier. Spend the majority of your money on the S tier and maybe the A tier items. All right, guys, hope this video helps. Like, subscribe, support the channel by grabbing a copy of the Testosterone ebook and the HSP training ebook. I'm out of here.